good morning. I invite you to stand as you're able for our call to worship, which today is taken from Psalm 100. So in the back of the hymnal to 821. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord who has made us is God. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. For the Lord is good. Our first hymn is Jesus Shall Reign 157. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for this day and for every day you give to us. Lord, thanking you for this place that we can come and worship and praise you. Thanking you for so many things. Lord, we give you thanks. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, his dying on that cross for all of our sakes, for the opportunity of having uh, the choice of salvation and eternal life. Lord, we give you thanks this day and always. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
Gracious God, we come before you thanking you for everything in our lives. Lord, for the joyous times and for the difficult times, for the celebrations and for the concerns. We know that we can come to you anytime, night or day, and you are there. It even tells us in scriptures that you do not slumber nor sleep. So when we can't, we can turn to you with our prayers, with our thoughts, just in silence as you gently hold us. Lord, we ask that you be with the Finnemore family with the passing of Kathy. And Lord, for uh, as they go through the, the planning process and, and all that takes place, be with them, be with Bob. Uh, Lord, um, and we ask that you even now be with Robin and to, to calm her nerves as best as that is possible. But also, Lord, we, we just pray right now that it will be a successful surgery and that she will mend and heal completely um, in short order. And Lord, for, uh, for Krista and for other concerns, we lift them before you. Uh, for the, the, the Smith family and for uh, loved ones and for um, the other ones that have been mentioned that just right now escape my mind. But Lord, you know each person, you know each situation. So we just ask for your touch to be upon all of us uh, where healing is needed. We ask for that to take place. And Lord, sometimes healing isn't just always limited to physical healing. But there may be emotional healings that need to take place. Maybe there's financial concerns. Uh, whatever the situation is, Lord, we know that we can go to you um, and, and seek uh, your wisdom and your guidance. But also, Lord, we are a community. We are a faith community. So it helps to share um, our joyous times and our celebrations, but also our, our difficult times and our struggles. Uh, we are here for each other, um, and we care about one another and what's going on in our lives. That's why we have this time called Joys and Concerns in the first place. So, Lord, just nurture all of us. And, Lord, as we do come together and celebrate this day we call Thanksgiving, may indeed, may it be more than just food and sports and those kind of activities and that's all good and well, but Lord, may we truly pause to give you thanks, but may we not limit it to one day of the year, that we show our gratitude uh, to you every day and throughout the days. Lord, continue to guide us, your church, of how we are to be serving and doing and being you uh, here on earth. And all that we say, all that we are about, may people see Christ in us. We thank you, Lord. Continue to guide us and direct us. Show us your way and your will. We give you thanks and praise for all of these things and for so much more. And we bring them before you in Jesus' precious and holy name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing 174, His Name is Wonderful.
seated. Our reading this morning comes to us from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. Please listen to the word of the Lord. This morning's reading speaks of thanksgiving and prayer, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you might have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption for the forgiveness of sins. The Son is in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fulfillness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This has been the word of God for the people of God. Let all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Today we celebrate Christ the King Sunday. Throughout Jesus' life, he was referred to as King. And one of the phrases, one of the names we know him by is King of Kings. Even as he was being nailed to the cross, Pilate ordered for a sign to be made and placed above his head, stating, This is the King of the Jews. Now, <clears throat> Those who were in charge weren't happy with that sign, but basically Pilate said, what I did, I have done, and I will not undo it. But even then, he was listed as the king of the Jews, but kind of misunderstood, because without, or throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, he, Jesus kept saying, my kingdom is not of this world. But you see, the Jewish people wanted him to be like the other earthly kings they had uh, been used to. Not all of them were good kings, um, but there were some that were. But uh, Jesus was not to be an earthly king because God had different plans for him as king. The passage that Denny just shared with us describes the supremacy of Christ, and it's divided into two parts. Uh, his supremacy in creation which is from verses 15 and through 17, and his supremacy in redemption, which is verses 18 through 20. Christ's supremacy was first shown in his relationship with God. Paul calls Jesus uh, the image of the invisible God. Christ is God's complete, perfect, um, exact imprint of himself. John 14, 9, Jesus tells the disciples, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Put it another way, Jesus, in his earthly form, was God with skin on. While on earth, Jesus was both fully human and fully divine. Everything that Jesus did while he was on earth, he did to fulfill God's will, including dying on the cross. The second half of verse 15, Paul states that Christ is the firstborn over all creation. Just as the firstborn son had certain privileges and rights in biblical times, Jesus has certain rights in relationship to all of creation because he existed before creation began. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit all existed before creation began. I mean, and they, they are indeed three in one. But to give an example, in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, the first chapter, verse 26, 
Jesus or God says, let us make humankind in our image, in our likeness. So this us, this our, is representing the Holy Trinity of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Another example in the New Testament, John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and also then verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. All of this, of course, is referring to Jesus. I have a half sheet of plywood that has been painted and I've uh, lettered and I put it out uh, as part of our Christmas decoration. And I quote John 1, 14, the world became flesh and made his dwelling among us. To me, that's a Christmas story. That's the, the coming of Christ, but it's talked about uh, there in, in that aspect uh, even before uh, the beginning of creation. We're getting back to the Colossians passage. Uh, there is the emphasis that Christ uh, is superior over all of creation. For by him, Christ, all things were created. Therefore, Christ rules supreme over all things, all powers and all authorities. Indeed, he is Lord of all. The second part of Christ's supremacy is in the redemption, where Jesus is referred to as the firstborn over all creation. But this same terminology, this firstborn, is also used in verse 18. Here we see it firstborn over all creation and now firstborn from among the dead. Christ was the first one to be raised from the dead with a resurrection body. Others were raised from the dead only to die again. But Jesus is alive and will remain alive forever and ever for all of eternity. And that's, to me, the exciting thing about being a Christian, about being a follower and a believer of, of Jesus Christ. We don't, we don't worship, we don't idolize some inanimate object that has no life. Our Savior is alive. And that in itself should have us excited and we should be rejoicing and celebrating all of the time. The Apostle Paul also reminds us that Christ is the head of the church. And one example here is from Ephesians 5, 23 and 24. Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. And the church submits to Christ. You see, we are to submit to him, not him submitting to us. Sometimes it seems like some folks think that Christ should submit to us. Verse 19 to me is probably one of the most powerful descriptions of Christ's divinity in the New Testament. Here we are told that for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ. God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ. This fullness demonstrates the totality of God with all of his powers and attributes. But we understand that Jesus did not boast about his superiority. In fact, the very opposite. He was very humble about it. We are told in Philippians 2, our attitude should be the same as Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. That's what Christ did. He was humble. Even his beginnings as a child, as we will get into that in the next couple of weeks, he wasn't born in a five-star hotel where the servants came and took care of them. No, it was in a place where animals are kept smelly. Certainly not the place the king of kings and the Lord of lords, we would think, would be born. We see Christ's supremacy also as reconciler. If you will, a bridge connecting us with God. 
He is the peacemaker between God and ourselves as well. So once again, we need to be reconciled to God, not God reconciling to us. We may stray from God and we may turn from God from time to time, but the great news is he doesn't forsake us. He does not turn away from us. He is always there, ready to receive us back when we stumble and fall or when we turn away. The cross was God's means of grace that was offered to us, a very costly one for Christ to pay. But he did so freely and willingly in obedience to God's will. In fact, all that Jesus did while he was on earth was in obedience to God's will. And my dear sisters and brothers, that's what we need to strive for. We need to be in obedience to God's will. Yes, we mess up from time to time. Well, I guess I won't include you. Um, I know I stumble and fall from time to time. Um, I kind of think we probably all do, but that's an individual thing uh, for us to understand. Uh, one of my daily little short prayers is, Lord, help me to do the things that you want me to do today according to your will. Do I always get those accomplished? No. Uh, but I, I try, and I think that's what we are to do. I don't think. I know that's what we are to do. We are to be um, as obedient to God's will and not our will. Jesus was the only one who was capable and willing to carry out God's will, to pay the price asked by God for salvation and redemption that is available to all peoples at all times. Jesus is the only one capable or willing to do that. Well, for these past few minutes, I've been talking about how Christ is being supreme in all of creation and redemption. But how does that play out in our day-to-day -day living? Well, everything I've mentioned means very little if we don't make Jesus number one in our lives. Some have lists that they make, things that they need to accomplish that day. And, but we need to do that same kind of thing, either mentally or write it down. We need to have Jesus first because any other place where Jesus is and the order is wrong, the order is not how it is to be. So Christ must be first in our lives. We must crown him Lord of Lord and kings of kings. And I'm not talking about just coming to worship service once a week. Don't get up and leave. It's important to be here. And it is it's necessary, as far as I'm concerned, to come each Sunday to be fed in spite of me or maybe, maybe just because of what God has laid on my heart. You need to get beyond me. You need to hear the message of Christ for us. We come to worship the audience of one when we come to the Lord's house, and that's to worship God. But we have fellowship. I know there were folks who have told me in, in the past, well, I like to watch so-and-so on TV. You know, whether they're evangelists or, or they're, they're preachers of some kind, I have no problem with that. I watch some once in a while not as much as I used to, um, but that's fine. But then I asked them the question, that's all well and good. But when you have a concern, do you turn to so-and-so, and I won't mention any names, where do you turn to? If that's your only source of getting information, that's not fellowship. I know technology is great, but I don't think they've come up yet where the TV can talk back to us. I mean, we can talk to the TV, and I do that from time to time. I say, no, don't go there, you know. Or, or in, our, uh, in our household, Hallmark is the, the great channel. Like, okay, here they go. Nope, it's not this one. It's never the first one. It's always the second one. And they live happily ever after. But someone in our household says, you know, if more of us follow the, 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 uh, the themes of um, 
hallmark, maybe the world would be a better place. Uh, but anyway, that coming together to worship and to praise God and to share our joys and our concerns, they're all important. They're all necessary. And I don't think you can get that from TV. And so, um, but you know, it's, it's more than, than that. It's how we live our lives the rest of the week. That really is how it, things come about and it's true. Or we need to be continually believing and trusting in Christ, seeking his forgiveness of our sins and living our lives according to his word and his commands and his teachings seeking after him in all aspects of our lives and our dealings with others. How we conduct our lives publicly and privately. And these are just a few things uh, that I mentioned. But you see, we need to be fully invested in Christ because he was fully invested in us by dying on the cross. Again, carrying out God's will. The passage I love, I think, the most is when Jesus is on his knees in a garden and he says, not my will, but your will be done. He was willing to, to give up his will, even to die on the cross for all of us. So he must be our all in all. He must be our first in all things. We need to remind ourselves that our God is a holy God reaching down to every one of us right now, touching us, offering us forgiveness of all of our sins and inviting us to come to him and to be in perfect relationship with him right now. He's reaching down, touching those who have concerns, those who have issues, those who are celebrating and rejoicing can't wait for Thanksgiving Day to meet your family and friends, as crazy as they all are. Oh, I'm sorry, maybe your family isn't crazy. Um, you know, ours is, and I'm excited, because then I fit right in. Um, I don't stand out like a sore thumb. And uh, so it, it's a great time, but that's how our relationship should be with Christ. That we're just so in love with him that we just don't think of other things. That's where the real test comes from of being true disciples of Jesus Christ. Not just to go through the motions because he knows everything about us and he loves us. One example I took out, but it came to my mind and I'm gonna put it back in. No, it's not about the first service I talked about being totally committed and it, was a, it, was, it bombed out. Um, so, but hopefully this one works. It, and it goes back to about coming to worship. But it's not just about Sunday morning for an hour. Because you see, coming into this building doesn't necessarily make us a Christian. Just like when you're standing in your garage, it doesn't make you a vehicle. We need to apply things. Thank you, Will. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, you get it. Maybe I'll let you do some snow plowing for me, Wayne, because I know you're just so excited about that. Um, but it's more than that. This is a good start. This is where we need to be, and we need to be fed and nurtured on a weekly basis. It's just so important to understand that God, our God loves us and cares for us so much that he sacrificed his son for us. God's gift of salvation through Jesus Christ remains the same from the very moment it's offered to today and for all eternity. And this one fact alone proves Christ's supremacy is above all of creation and all of redemption. Christ is, or is he, king of kings of our lives. If he isn't, now's the perfect time to invite him into our hearts and into our lives as our Lord and Savior. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. As now we sing in such appropriate after this message, Victory in Jesus, 370.
Let us stand as we're able. Victory in Jesus. <laughs>
Father God, we give you thanks for these gifts and offerings. May they be used to further your kingdom here in this place and around the world. We thank you for all of your blessings to us. We bring all of these things before you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The benediction response is 176, majesty worship his majesty, sisters and brothers. We have gathered in the Lord's house to worship and to praise him. Go out this day and every day to give thanks and praise to him. In the case you don't get to shake your hand as you go out, happy Thanksgiving to you all. God bless. Amen. <laughs>